Well, hey, what's up, GT family? Welcome back to another blade review. We're looking here today at some Spanish steel. We're looking today at the Joker Lynx, and we're gonna really answer two questions today that I asked myself when I purchased this blade. Are Joker knives just a joke, and can Spain make a good knife? So the backstory is just kind of funny on how I even went about picking up one of these blades. About a year ago, I was just kind of surfing around on Amazon like I often do, looking for new knife designs and you know blades and gear that are out there that we might want to test out and review here on the channel for us as a GT you know family who love gear and love blades and love all that stuff. And I came across this brand, Joker Knives. I kind of looked into them a little bit. I'm like, hmm, pretty decent material, pretty decent you know prices, and they're made in Spain. We haven't really reviewed a lot of stuff from Spain here at the channel. In fact, it might only be one blade we've ever reviewed from Spain. That one I wasn't super impressed with if I remember correctly. And just when I saw those prices and the fact that the material and where they were made, I said, why not? And I threw them on the blade wish list and they sat there for about a year until about a month ago when I finally decided to pull the trigger and on a whim picked up this orange handled Lynx. And so one of the first things I wanted to do was try out the 90 degree spine on this thing and see if it could throw sparks. Just soak it all in guys, just soak in the blade right there. Just love that blade shape. I mean, that is a classic, classic blade shape. And I'm gonna be rolling in tons of B-roll. I've had so much fun using this knife extensively, not only to build fires in the backyard for the kids and myself, practice bushcraft skills, and just general utility around the home. I've really put this through its paces as best I can for you guys. So we together, you and me both as the GT family can determine is Joker Knives a joke or is it really something that you know takes the cake, honestly. And so what we're looking at here is Spanish made and it is made out of Bowler N695 steel. Rockwell 58 is from what I'm seeing on their website. So uh, that's a stainless steel, definitely in the world of like VG10, 154CM, um, a lot of that type of stuff. I've seen many posts when I was posting on Instagram and I love the comments and stuff that we get on social media. So if you're not following along on Instagram, now we're on Parler, Facebook, lots of places. Um, I get data from you guys. So some of you guys over in Europe that are more familiar, you guys have put this up against some S3V and ability. So super cool. So very rust resistant, good edge retention. Uh, and for this size of knife, great. I have zero complaints with that type of steel. Uh, and then what we're looking at is a high saber grind. Love that style of grind. This is perfect. It's not too low. Low saber grinds are strong, but they don't cut very well. Full flats cut really well, but they lack a little bit in lateral strength. This is just a perfect, very high saber grind. Uh, their great amount of belly. The relief edge was perfect. Everything you see is factory work. I did not tune this up. I didn't put it on a ceramic rod. I did nothing with this knife out of the box. This thing is making curls. This thing is doing food prep. This thing is doing all the work that you're seeing here with ease. And I haven't even tuned it up yet, guys. I mean, it's holding a really good edge. That N, uh, excuse me, N695 um, that they are using really seems to be holding an edge very well and I'm very happy with that. So the overall length is 4.25 inches. Actual cutting edge is four inches on the dot. And the thickness back here by the handles, and it basically keeps that all the way down almost to the tip, is 0 0.154, basically 5 30 seconds of an inch thick, which is just perfect for this size. Uh, these size knives don't need to be, you know, like 3 16ths. An eighth of an inch is fine, but then you'll lack a little bit of the durability and strength. So I think that's just a perfect blending. And then you can see there down near that tip, very robust, thick, strong tip as well. And it was very well ground, very, very well ground on both sides there. I had no issues for a factory blade, man. I mean, it, it, it feels like it's not a factory blade. I feel like it's something better <laughs> than a factory blade, even though um, it's made, it's, uh, this company has been around, I believe since the eighties is what I understand uh, and has been performing super well. There's really nothing I can complain about with the shape, the, the design, the materials, the performance, the edge geometry, all of it is just killing it 
on this Lynx. Okay, so in a knife like this, handle ergonomics are extremely important. You're gonna probably be using this a lot. You want it to feel very comfortable in the hand. You want it to pop, maybe in vibrancy, like this orange micarta, very high polish, or you can get kind of the blue black that is also available. Um, and these are pinned in micarta handle scales, tube lanyard hole. You're looking at about a 4.7 overall handle length. Full tang, obviously you got some black liners in there as well. And what you're gonna get, this is what I, I was I was super surprised by. When looking at the picture, I was expecting a pretty narrow, kind of thin, small handle. That's what you get a lot with European knives. Not the case on this handle. Not only is it plenty long enough, but the maximum thickness right here is 0 0.9 inches thick, and the narrowest this entire handle is is 0 0.84 inches thick. So this is a full large handle for my large size hands. You guys know what's up with that. Look at that. I mean, look at all the real estate out the back. I mean, it feels so full. I have probably half of my knife collection in this size range have smaller, narrower handles. So I love how full my grip is. And because every single angle is perfectly contoured. I mean, look at that. There is no, I don't feel no lip anywhere, anywhere on this handle. I mean, it is so, the fit and finish is kind of bonkers guys really it's like bananas the the amount of fit and finish on the handle i was not expecting that at all i mean it, it reminds me of like semi-custom knives that i've uh, messed around with in the past here at the channel so i'm just in love with these handles i mean zero hot spots you could literally work with this all day great guard not too big but perfect amount right there it just kind of sweeps down you have some nice jimping, perfect style, you know, just slightly block, blocky, just to give you a little grip there, nothing to cause any pain or issue. Even the handles are slightly scalloped around there. So nice right there, love that. And then a good shelf even right there, so you can kind of put your thumb if you're doing a grip like that and kind of rest your finger right there as well. And then the rear tang is exposed with just a little bit of jimping, so you could do some pommeling if you needed to. So there are even sheath options when it comes to this knife. Now, we have the black leather. That's gonna be the cheaper version. You can get this with an extra attachment for a fire steel as well. So there are versions that are available for that. Uh, really good stitching all the way around, good drainage hole, lashing points, comes with some 550 paracord that matches kind of the handle, which is super cool. Uh, I love that the leather belt loop is flush with the handle, so it's not gonna ride high. It has two buttons right here for a good snap and then that will fit onto most belts, no matter what the width may be. Hey, Tommy the Trail Dog walking in a frame in the back. So that's all super good. The one thing that I did notice when I was carrying this around is put it on my belt and literally carried it all around the home and everything I was doing for several days, literally for like eight hours, is sometimes depending on the angle that you might be carrying it when you sit, you will break the snaps and the snaps will pop, like disconnect. Um, which could cause a potential loss of the knife. Um, so I would have preferred these to be sewn on. The, it's still very good quality sheath, holds the, the knife super well. There's no like forming that needs to be done. Um, it's a, a very quiet sheath. So that's all good. It's a simple fix for that is to do something like this, and I'm annotating in what this uh, little drop leg feature is or dr dangle feature is. This will alleviate any of that extra tension if you were to sit on like a log and put a lot of pressure on the sheath, it would alleviate it and it wouldn't pop those button snaps. So again, I would have preferred that to be sewn on instead of button snap, um, but easily alleviate an overall great quality sheath. But what's super exciting is you can get factory Kydex as well on Amazon for this particular model. When I'm filming this, it's about $15, $14 extra to go with the Kydex. Uh, it just kind of fluctuates on color combinations and things like that. But 15, 20 bucks, you can get the Kydex sheath and you can get it either plain without the fire steel or you can get this epic fire steel that matches the handle color and just works super well. It's a very, very good fire steel. You're gonna get a pancake design, good retention. You're gonna get a big nylon web that you can obviously remove if you want to, um, but that's really well done, no issues there. The one thing is that they have this tension screw, which works, but it's kind of big and a little bit bulky. I would have liked to just have like the screw with the rubber gasket, kind of like SE Knives does out there. So, I mean, I can obviously mod that if I need to, but the Kydex is very form-fitting, it doesn't rattle, and it's a very, very good option. So this really kind of depends on your 
feel, you have a lot to choose from in the sheath department. All right, so guys, as I showed you a little earlier, and again, we'll have those links for you over to Amazon in the description below this video. Just click that little box and then it'll take you over. You can take a look not only at the links, but a lot of the other designs that they have. Anywhere from as low as, depending on the handles, as of today, color combinations, $71 up to 100 bucks, depending on handle and sheath options you decide to go with, which I think is a screaming deal. That's why I was like, this it's too good to be true. I can't believe that a Spanish-made knife can really be that good. There's got to be weird quality control issues or, you know, like super small handle and, you know, goofy grind. None of that. I mean, it's just so sweet. Uh, when I realized, because I bought it without knowing that there was a Kydex option, otherwise it just gone straight with that. I reached out to the company, said, would you just send me the Kydex sheath over so that I can include it in the video? So they did that, but then they sent me two other knives that we'll be reviewing down the line. One of them, hopefully I pronounce this right, the Nardico is a bushcraft style knife. This one is made with Sandvik 14C 28N steel. There we go, Scandi ground, super cool. Uh, this one has a different type of micarta on there, uh, leather sheath, a little bit different leather sheath. This one came with fire steel. This guy usually goes for about 75 bucks. Super crazy. Uh, we'll be talking about that. And then they did send me the Nomad as well. So you'll be seeing a video and we'll be giving at least one of these away uh, in the future. That is also made with the N695 steel. And that one goes for a little over hundred bucks. I think like 110, something like that. And that's definitely almost a survival knife. Uh, it's about five inches and you know very robust. So those will all be in the Amazon links for you guys below. You can check out and uh, do appreciate when you go pop over there and click those links and check it out when you are interested in a particular gear item. And so just for size and competitive options, just want to give you kind of some perspective here. Um, usually right around 80 bucks, maybe a little bit less, is the Sandvik 14C 28N Mora. So you're getting a better steel than uh, what the Mora has, about the same size. You're getting full tang, micarta, leather um, sheath, and, you know, made in Sweden, made in Spain. Um, so I think that's a great, like, just food for thought there, perspective when you're looking at the, kind of those compact belt knives and somebody had brought up, oh, it looks kind of like just a copy of an SE. It is by no means a copy of an SE. Here's my SE4 for a hundred bucks uh, with a Kydex sheath, my Carta full tang. This is even a thicker blade though. I mean, this thing comes in at 3 16 which is a little bit overkill in my opinion. Um, very different, you know, style kind of a knife. There's full flat, high saber, you know, all kinds of stuff there, but just kind of for food for thought, some perspective. Uh, so that's just kind of give you some data there uh, as you're considering value to performance. Well guys, I don't think I need to say it, but I will. I went into these Joker knives really kind of 50-50. Wasn't really expecting a lot. Sure, let's do it for the heck of it. Let's get a Spanish knife in here. We haven't done too many or almost none of them. Let's see what happens. Not expecting a whole lot and in turn just blew my mind honestly. And so this is definitely, Joker knives are not a joke and I believe Spain absolutely makes some amazing cutlery, amazing blades. And what was just kind of a weird kind of on the whim, ch change it up purchase has now become something I'm like, thank God I did that. Man, I'm missing out. This is a blade I, I wish I had bought years, honestly, earlier. Would be been getting so much more use up until this point, which is uh, awesome. And I look forward to testing out the other Joker knives that you've seen in this video, as well as just some of their other Spanish made products. I think uh, they have a lot going on and I'm glad to be able to just introduce them to you, particularly the American audience. I know a lot of you over in Europe, you guys use these regularly, um, and I'd love to just hear feedback from you guys in the comments, those of you who already own Joker knives, always love reading those comments. And uh, yeah, just, just super pumped and definitely kick butt blades from Spain. They know what they're doing over there with this particular design and th these blades. So uh, appreciate you guys. Check out the other video popping up. Subscribe if you haven't yet become a subscriber here at the channel, throwing up content like this all the time. And always remember guys, stay equipped, stay prepared, and we'll see you out there.